Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to share with you a little bit of information from yesterday's visit with three Konas to the new Ionity chargers at Peterborough Services. So yep, there are um, six new Ionity bays at Peterborough Services, that's just off the A1 and A605 junction, and they're 350 kilowatt chargers, supposedly the fastest HPC chargers in the country. So getting three Konas there to test how fast uh, charge rates we actually get really really useful but it all started as just myself and Roly in his white cone and meeting up to say hello after the lockdown we hadn't uh, caught up for such a long time and then we thought we'd expand it to a couple more coners and before you know it there was an interest um, from other people talking about this new BMS update and whether that was impacting slower charging so we thought, well, why not expand it to a few more Kona owners if we can? And luckily, Richard and Vicky came along in their yellow Kona, which has had the BMS update and are experiencing slower charging on fast chargers like the Ionity chargers. So great opportunity, three Konas, one with the update on and two without. Let's see what charging rates they get and also catch up and say hello. That was the idea. But anyway, what actually happened? Well, the idea to have the different Konas there to see what charge rates you get and for those that are experienced with Kona electrics you know that there's a window of opportunity for getting the fastest rate and it's based on temperature of the battery and how low state of charge you've got especially in the winter if the battery's cold and you arrive with less than 50 percent of battery state of charge you know you're not going to get sorry, higher than 50% state of charge, you know you're not going to get a very good charge rate. So depending on what we arrived with, depending what the battery temperatures were, would depend on how high a rate you get. So I wasn't wasn't necessarily expecting to get the massive 76 to 78 kilowatts that we've seen other people get because I knew I wasn't going to arrive with the right state of charge. So in my blue Kona, uh, I arrived with 38% state of charge. Roly in his white Kona arrived with 64% state of charge. And I believe, I'm not 100% certain, but Richard and Vicky in their yellow Kona arrived with 20-ish percent or something around that. It was definitely less than mine. So out of the three, um, Roly travelled 30 to 40 miles. I travelled 100 miles. Richard and Vicky travelled 70 miles. And ambient temperature was 14 degrees. My battery temperature was showing at 18 degrees when I arrived. So I pretty much bet all of the Konas were in that region. Um, I think <laughs> Richard drives his a bit more enthusiastically than mine. So I would guess he was probably slightly above the 18 degrees, maybe closer to 20 degrees when he started. Uh, Rowley would have been very similar in his white Kona to me at about 18 degrees C. So my expectations would be that uh, the battery would need to warm up a little bit. So it would start at a good rate, um, as I'd normally see on a uh, 50 kilowatt fast charger, rapid charger. Um, and then it would ramp up as the temperature mm -hmm. of the battery rose. That was what I was obviously expecting. So what results did we see? For my car, and that's what I can speak of mostly because <clears throat> that's the one that uh, I took the images of and took the video of to see what the charge rates were, it kicked off to start with at 52 kilowatts. That's the, that's the fastest speed I've, I've seen in this Kona because I've never been on any other charger other than a rapid 50 kilowatt charger. So 52 kilowatts to start with, not bad, but not brilliant you know from 38 percent state of charge i was probably expecting to see it into the 60s i was hoping for that but it, it kept rising it rose until 59 kilowatts that was the peak that i saw and at that time the um what do we call it the battery cooling management system it's not the bms um but the cooling system fan and pump you could hear it running on my car so it reached temperature. Uh, I had a look through on the OBD2 reader and that was showing 26 to 28 degrees on the battery. So that was why the fan was coming on because it had reached temperature. So it was charging quite quickly at nearly 60 kilowatts. That was warming the battery. So it needed to be kept at the optimum level to keep the optimum charge rate going through. So all well and good. That went really, really well, I think. Rowley arrived with 64% in his white Kona, so you wouldn't expect him to get um, such a good rate of charge. Um, temperature, again, it would need to start at a sensible rate and ramp up. And what we saw was he started uh, charging in the 40 kilowatt region. So I think it was 42 kilowatts that he started at and then started to increase as the battery got warmer again. 
Interestingly though, he charged up to 90% and at no time during that period did his engine management, sorry, his <laughs> battery management engine, what am I saying? His uh, management system of the cooling fan and pump, etc. That didn't come on at all, whereas mine did. So that will be because mine was warming up a bit more. Mine was getting a slightly higher charge rate than his because I had a lower state of charge to start with. So sort of expected, but you, you'd also think that he would get a higher charge rate that would then bring the battery temperature up higher and uh, then the cooling fans would come on. But of course, being already quite full at 64% to start with, the battery had less space in it for those electrons to go. So with more contention, it's not good for the battery to force it in at higher speeds. So he never got to those um, high 50s kilowatt charge rates, and certainly neither of us saw 60 odd kilowatts or 70 kilowatts. So the question is, what happened to the yellow Kona, which has had the new BMS update performed on it? And we were there basically because Richard was saying that he's not getting very good charge rates on um, the Shell fast chargers or any faster charger than a 50 kilowatt charger. He's noticed since having his car updated that it now works on all the ecotricity chargers. So something in the handshake with chargers has changed, which is making it more compatible. So that's a good thing. It's a shame it's taken 18 months from the launch of the Kona to get to that point. But anyway, but what did we see? Well, I arrived when he had almost finished charging, to be honest. So I don't know of the exact rates. Um, I don't know of the exact detail of his charging profile. But what I do know is what he said was it never went above 35, 36 kilowatts. And it was well over the hour, and I mean well over the hour, to get to 80%. So that's just not acceptable. That's not according to what Hyundai advertised for the car. So whatever's happened to that car, it's wrong. Now, you could say, well, there could be something else wrong with the car, and I think that's what Hyundai are going to investigate. They're going to check the car out and see if there's anything else that could be causing that. But, you know, when other people around the uh, country and other people in other countries are reporting similar things, and when Richard's tried the 2020 Kona, which has the same sort of level of software on it, and he gets the same experience with higher chargers, then it doesn't take a scientist to work out that something fishy is going on here with that update and it has affected charging on faster chargers. So we'll wait for the actual answers from Hyundai to find out what's going on. In the meantime, yesterday um, we found out that in the UK that update has stopped being pushed out now. So some dealers, maybe all dealers, but we're getting reports in to say that that update is not being pushed out anymore. So something's wrong. Now, the problem with Hyundai not telling us what's in these updates, I mean, it would be much better if they just said, look, here's the update, this is what's in it, this is what it changes, and this is what the customer should experience positively, and this is what you should experience potentially as a negative. They should be open and tell us what's going on. Because when they don't, all we get is, well, it could be this, and every observation people see is then blamed on the update, whether it is or whether it's not. So it becomes Chinese whispers, it becomes negative. It's just bad press for Hyundai. It is a great shame that Hyundai seem to be the Korean-based company that keep this information really, really secret. They don't tell the UK technicians even what's going on in these updates, from what I can tell. So it's, it's such a great, great shame that that's what happens because it, it could be easier it could be better if they just were a little bit more honest and then tested these things by rolling them out into their long-term test cars which they must have on the road then why can't they tell what's going on before customers get it to push an update out and for customers to get problems and have to report them to Hyundai and complain to Hyundai it, that that's just that's just wrong it's putting the secrecy around their technology ahead of the marketing of the company in that it's just giving Hyundai a bad name, thinking if you get an update, you don't know what's going to be in it and you don't know whether it's going to be a positive experience or not. That's not what we want. Anyway, enough ranting about the communication from Hyundai. Let's hope it improves. Let's hope we get some actual answers from Hyundai as to what is going on with this update and what it's supposed to do. And, you know, will they ever tell us the fault? Yeah. I guess with these secretive companies, sometimes they don't. They, If there is a problem that they've worked out that they need to stop the update being rolled out, then they might not tell us what was wrong with it. They might just say, oh, it's all okay now, and this is what's in it. So let's wait and see, see how honest they are, how open they are, 
and find out what's going on. But at the moment, we know that there are various reports of various issues with this BMS update, not just higher charge rates from high charges, the HPCs, sorry, slower charge rates from those HPCs. We're not just getting those reports, there are other things as well. So there's intimations that there's some new management on the high voltage battery, on the 12 volt battery. There's talk that there's release of some of the energy in the spare headroom of the battery that people are seeing higher range. Well, what they really mean is higher numbers on their GOM, don't they, which could just be a reset of the software. And this is the problem. We don't know what's true and what's not because we don't know whether there was anything changed in that area. Um, so people are adding two and two and making sometimes four, sometimes 22, sometimes a lot more than that. So I hope we get answers. Um, what I can say categorically from that test that we did with three Koners is that the two Koners that um, did not have the update charged a lot faster. Uh, both in time and kilowatt charge rate. So over to you, Hyundai. Um, hopefully you can have a look at your software, find out what's wrong, and get us a good update that improves the charging, not actually takes away some of the features of charging that we've got. But what's my experience like of the Ionity charger then? Uh, well, it's a mixed bag, really, because based on that performance, you know, I wouldn't go and seek out an Ionity charger to get that high speed and update with Instavol and Shell having you know, chargers that can do over 100 kilowatts, there's no need for such a high output um, as the Ionity chargers. You know, the Kona doesn't benefit from that. Other cars might do, but not necessarily the Kona. So I wouldn't go and search out an Ionity charger for a faster charge rate. I might go to an Instavol 125, 150 uh, kilowatt charger, whatever they are. Um, but I wouldn't go looking for the Ionity chargers. But the space around, the car parking space for charging was fantastic. Best space and best layout I have ever seen in a uh, charging bay. So well done, Ionity, for that. Absolutely brilliant. So it is worth going for that if you don't want your car scratched and you want some space and social distancing. That really, really makes a big difference. But the one reason why I wouldn't go there is the price. I mean, it was on free vend when we went there, so I didn't mind plugging in, and I was just going to do a short test to see what charge rate we got. But because it was free, charged the car up completely so we could see a little bit more of the charge profile. It would have cost £33.81 pence to add the 43 kilowatt hours that I did. 33.81. That's more than I spent all last year on charging the Kona whole year's worth of value because i charge on solar at home i don't spend very much and i don't charge on public charges very often so when i do you know it's 20 25 to 35 p a kilowatt hour it's not 69 pence a kilowatt hour so the ionity one must really only be suited to people that have got more money than cents and they're extremely convenient and you've got a car that can make use of that high output from the um, chargers which the Kona Electric doesn't you know it tops out at 77 78 kilowatts if you're at the perfect perfect state of charge rate uh, the other thing to say about the Ionity chargers are that it uh, started extremely easily press the button to say start after you uh, then plug the car in and uh, away the charge went now, okay it was on free charge so i didn't have to swipe a card but it really was as simple as an instavolt you just swipe your debit card and away you go uh, extremely easy to use the cable yeah it was much thicker and heavier the connector um, was really stiff and hard to move towards the charge port and if you were at the wrong angle, yeah, I, I guess it might pull on the charge port of the car. So to be honest, there needed to be a little bit more flexibility in that cable. Otherwise, you might be at risk at the wrong angles of damaging the port on your car. I guess with the wider charge bays, you shouldn't have that problem. You should be able to park perfectly to connect your car to the uh, cable and the charger. But yeah, just, just a little small improvement there, I honestly, would be useful to have a little bit more flexibility in that cable and the actual connector so that you don't damage your cars or have any fear of damaging your car. Because I, I don't know, I'm not an expert, it may or may not, but to me it felt um, uncomfortable having that much pressure on the cable and connector. So... That's my thoughts on Ionity, a mixed bag really, uh, brilliant charging spaces, um, 
great easy connector to use in great locations i guess on motorways if that's your thing it's not for me uh, but the price wow um yeah i wouldn't pay for that not at all i would avoid them even though they've got wide charge bays and a little bit faster than a 50 kilowatt charger so have you used any of the Ionity chargers so far in your Kona Electric and what charge rates did you get? But what state of charge were you at and what temperature was your battery at? Or, you know, what could you guess the battery temperature it was at? Did your fan come on? Um, have you had the update done? And what is your experience of this update? Let me know in the comments below. The more information we get, the more picture, the better picture we can get uh, about this update and about charging rates in the Kona. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was useful. I'll get back on with cleaning the car now. See you again soon. Bye for now.